This video is for the exercise using paragraph and character palette palettes with a text mask. And in this exercise, we will create a text mask, use the paragraph and character palettes to change settings, add an image into the text, and add layer styles. This is an example of what the finished exercise should look like. So to get started, let us get the Toronto Skyline 2 JPEG. We're going to take a copy of this image, so we select it and copy, and we no longer need this file, so we can close it. We're going to create a new document, and it asks that we, from the preset, that we select photo, and we name that we name this file Toronto Skyline, and that we choose the size as landscape 8 by 10 which is a default and that we set the pixel at 72 pixels per inch so okay good now we're going to select the horizontal type mask tool to type the word Toronto but it asks that we use um, that we open up the character paragraph palette from the toolbar, which is this bar on the top, and it's this icon here, the toggle, the character and paragraph panels. So we'll click on that and it will open up our character pa um, palette. And it asks us to select the font stencil. So let's type that in. Very good. And then to click in the middle, and we're going to type the word Toronto. In cap, all caps. Now, as you can see, it's very small. So we're going to drag and select all the letters, and we're going to make some changes through the um, character palette. And in our palette, under the text size, we're going to type in 125. And then it also asks that we make some changes to the vertical and horizontal scale. The, this is this icon is for the vertical um, scale, and it's said to use the left right arrow slide to make the changes. So we want to set the the vertical to one hundred and ninety percent. So we'll drag to the right to increase that amount. There we go. Just one more. There we go. And for the horizontal scale, we're to set at 110. So let's drag to the right again and increase that to 110. There we go. Very good. As you can see, Toronto is now a lot larger. We'll just drag and center. We position it on the page so that it's nice and centered. Very good. Now we're asked to just select to click inside the text and select just the letters R-O-N in the word Toronto. So let's do that. So we'll just select. And then we're going to set a baseline shift. Now the baseline shift settings are right here. And that should come up and show us that it's the baseline shift. There we go. And it says to set at a minus uh, 54 points and um, I'll just show you how it, um, how the uh, baseline shift works so if we go to the right it, as you see it shifts the letters to the top and if we go to the left it will shift them to the bottom so since we want the minus it's, it's going to shift it to the bottom minus 54 There we go, 54 points. And once we're satisfied, then we can click on the commit to edit check mark at the top of the toolbar. There we go, and there we have the the um, our selection left on the page. Now we're going to add our Toronto Skyline 2 um, image that we copied in step one to the um, out to our text outline, go to edit, special paste, 
paste into. There we go. Now, as you can tell, we're going to have to make some adjustments to the size. Now, in this case, we're going to um, select Control T. Then it asks to select the lock link at the top, which will keep the ratio even when we set um, one of either the width or the height to the suggested setting of 140%. There you go. As you see, our pictures come a little larger. We're going to have to make some adjustments to that because it still um, cuts off our lettering. And make sure that our image um, thumbnail is the one that's selected. So we're going to drag a little bit so that we get all our T in and we'll drag to the right to make sure we get all of our O in. Okay, and then once we're happy with that, we can um, click on our Commit to Edit check. Mark. The next step, 14, is asked that we reposition the image so that the CN Tower is centered inside the first T in Toronto and that, that it's visible. So once again, just make sure that your image thumbnail is the one that you have selected in the layer. So we're going to just drag. There's our CN Tower. We're just going to make sure that that's centered. And as you see with the move or repositioning of our image, it has um, is shortened. The, the image is shorter than for Toronto. So we're going to have to make it a little larger by transforming Control T, and we're just going to resize that. Make sure our O is in. There we go. Okay, perfect. And then we'll accept these changes by clicking our commit trans transform check mark. In step 15, it asks that um, in the layers palette, control click on the black mask part of the layer that shows the mask text. And this will select the mask text. Let's do that. So if we click control click, as you see, the selection um, is chosen around the lettering. And we're going to go to it, ask to add the stroke effect by going to edit, stroke, and to set the pixel or the width size to three, and to select navy. Just choose one of the darker colors or colors closest to navy to you. I'm going to say OK. OK. And there we have our text, and we're going to deselect our selection. There we are. In step 16, we're going to add a um, style to the text. Choose our layer style button and add a drop shadow. And we'll just leave it at the default settings. And also, we're going to add the bevel and emboss effect. And for both, we'll just leave default settings and click on OK. Now, step, step 17, um, it asks us to choose the horizontal type tool in the toolbox. And in the character palette, click on the character palette options flyout and choose reset character to bring the palette settings back to default. So we'll click on our horizontal um, horizontal type text and then the options fly out for the character settings and we're going to click on reset character and that should take it back to default settings. Now we're asked to change the uh, text type. We're asked to set the font to Trebuchet MS. So let's do that. And then just after the TO in the word Toronto, we're going to type capital of Ontario. So just here. Let me take my cap off. 
article of Ontario. As you notice, it's it's tiny. So we're going to select the text and we're going to make some adjustments. We're going to change the text size to 28. And we're also asked to set the horizontal scale to 119. And then we're asked to reposition the text to be centered above the arrow N. Let's do that. There we go. Once we're happy, we can uh, click on the check mark to accept the changes. Now we're asked to click on the background layer. And with the eyedrop tool, we're going to select a color from the skyline, the purplish one, the purplish blues. So whether you like the darker or the lighter color, that's up to you. The one, the purplish blues. And then we're going to fill the um, background by clicking on the Alt and Backspace. And we fill it with that color, which is the foreground color. Now we're asked in step 23 to add a new layer. So let us do that. There's our new layer. And we're asked to use the eyedrop and, um, tool and to select a tan color from our image. Let's click here. That should give us. That's, a, that's about the tan color. Maybe I want to like a little darker here. Step 24, we are going, we're going to add... Um, a shape and it asks that we choose the shape tool and it's right here um, under the rectangle tool which is usually the default that's showing and we're going to select custom shape tool and then it says from the toolbar we're going to change or add custom shapes flyout um, nature shapes that we will append to our shape um, catalog. So we'll click on the shape and click on the flyout window and add nature. Uh, and then we will append. And it asks that we choose leaf um, 5, which is the maple leaf here. So we'll just hoover on it, leaf 5. And we'll click on that to choose it. I just wanted to make a note here that the Shape Tool Options bar for Photoshop 5 may appear different to what you may see in the video as I'm using Photoshop CS6. For instruction or step uh, 24, it asks that in the Shape Tool Option bar, you click on the Fill Pixels button. This will be this button, button here. And then it said to click on the custom shape tool. That's it's referring to the shape tool. And when you click on the little arrow here, the shape picker uh, catalog opens up. And this, if you click on the arrow here, then your choices to add the nature shape set will be in a list that's there. This. Well, the instructions is said that he centered was centered under the O. So let's release that here. Click and release. Next, in step 26, we're going to add the effects that we added to the Toronto Mass layer to the maple leaf shape um, layer. And to do that, we hold our hold down Alt and then drag and drop onto the maple leaf shape. Um, layer. There you go. We've added the same effects that we had on the the uh, mask layer. Well, I don't like the effect that we have for the capital of Ontario. I'm going to add a, um, some layer effects to that text. I'm going to add a drop shadow. And I'll just leave the default. And I'm going to add the bevel and emboss. And I'm going to choose on the structure style emboss 
and say OK. I also don't like the black look. I'm going to choose a different um, font color. And to do that, I just double click on the T on the text layer and it selects the text. And let's choose a sort of another, yeah, a darker blue color. Purple color. There we go. Okay, and I will accept those that change. Click OK. There we have our Capital of Ontario Toronto uh, project completed.